A few years ago, I and some other fine folks were commissioned to do a piece of supplemental material for a German-based DVD company called XS Entertainment. So we made a special feature for the 1977 Eurocrime film Beast with a Gun. I wasn't the editor on this, just the narrator. The Blu-ray's been out for a while, and the company asked me to put the feature up on here, since there's a good chance the majority of you haven't seen it. I had to censor the nudity in the video per YouTube's rules, but the actual piece in the disc is uncensored. If you like this and are in Germany, or in Region 2, or if you have a region-free Blu-ray player, you should check out Excess. They put out a lot of the kind of movies that you would normally see on my channel. I did a full commentary for them on another movie that I'll be releasing here in the future, so you have that to look forward to. Without further ado, here's a look at Beast with a Gun. Yes, I'm gonna kill your friend, and I'll do it very, very slow. I'm gonna inflict much pain. You're gonna hear a guy beg for his life, lady, because he betrayed Nani Vitali. Nani Vitali, the dangerous criminal. He's already killed two people. You know what he's known as? The Mad Dog Murderer. Beast with a Gun is a particularly serious film in the Italian exploitation genre. Even though you've got a main character who's a super criminal, a super predator, gets everything he wants, he's very romanticized as the mad dog killer. For the Helmet Burger villainous movies, it's up there. But at the same time, you feel for the victims and you like the cops. People love vigilantes. People love tough on crime stuff. People love tough cops and, and bad guys uh, being thwarted in really violent, brutal ways. It, it feels a lot less exploitative and it feels like the director has actually got some sincere feelings of importance to what he's doing. You do still get uh, plenty of nudity and plenty of gratuitous violence, but it rarely feels as frivolous as it does in many other films. The movie titled Beast with a Gun, or Ferocious, or Mad Dog Killer, or Mad Dog, or The Human Beast, or Street Killers, or simply La Belva Calmitra, is a 1970s Polizia Shetty that stands out amongst its brethren. Escaped psychopath Nana Vitali is on a rampage through Italy, and tough police inspector Santini is hot on his trail. The film is fairly nuanced, but it's a rather simplistic story with more depth than one might suspect mainly brought about by the charismatic and intense performance by Helmut Berger. It's uh, basically just a chase film um, of, of chasing the criminal. It's not uh, massively complicated. You don't have to wrap your brain around uh, some uh, really gnarly stuff that you would have to with, say, any of the Giallo films, for instance. It actually benefits from that simplicity. It's all about the characterization which is going on in the film. And that's where the film's strength really comes from, is the characters. The plot is engaging. Um, it definitely is sadistic, masochistic, uh, misogynistic, all the istics. And, but you're with it. You're with it. You kind of feel like you're reading a good piece of pulp fiction, you know, to, to coin a very, very trite phrase. Um, and for whatever reason, all of this violence just kind of washes over you and, and, and you don't really kind of look at it as being real. And that might be because of the acting. We have some uh, great performances from Richard Harrison, who is thankfully not in ninja mode during this film. It's, uh, he's a, a very strong presence. He doesn't have an awful lot of presence in the film, but when he is there, he really does command the screen and commands attention. And it's a fun movie. It's a really entertaining movie. You have this larger-than-life villain that's Helmut Berger, and you have ultra-badass Richard Harrison, and you feel it's all leading to something. Like, here's Helmut Berger who's dousing people in lie, and kidnapping women, and robbing shit. And then you have Richard Harrison who's just sick of Helmut Berger's shit. Let's just fucking kill this guy. So I'm expecting, like, you know, it's gonna come, like, fucking head-to-head. -head. You're gonna have this, like, 
Riggs Murtaugh versus Mr. Joshua moment. Maybe they both just fucking, maybe he just gets his ass shot at the end. So they fight each other at the end of the movie, and then uh, Helmetberger just gets arrested and taken back to jail. Uh, that's really anticlimactic. For an otherwise really suspenseful movie. A slow burn film with bursts of sadistic violence. Beast with a Gun is still, to this day, mainly known for appearing in Quentin Tarantino's Jackie Brown. That rug a helmet? You know, it's Helmet Burger. Still rather obscure given its place in the Italian exploitation genre, Beast with a Gun is well regarded by those who know of it and respect it as an almost unsung classic. I think almost every Italian exploitation movie is an overlooked gem because a lot of people don't realize that these movies paved the way for a lot of the blockbuster filmmakers of today to be making the kind of movies that they're making. Like, everything that Quentin Tarantino is making, it wouldn't exist if it were not for the Italian exploitation genre. I think it holds up very well. Um, it does have a certain staginess, which I think makes it sort of charming. You know, the, the way they just all just come out with their containers of lie and march toward him, it's like full-service homicide, you know. It's, 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 it's such a structured scene for such a bizarre act. When you watch it really closely, it is a film that does feel slightly cut. But the first time you see that film is particularly brutal. And I think because that we get to like the characters, that uh, there's, a, there's a certain attachment that we have to them in that respect. Uh, that makes the violence somewhat worse than in many of the films that came after it, where the characters are much more disposable and throwaway. This genre of tough cop, tough on crime, sleazy vigilante stuff has been happening for such a long time. And I think in comparison to the movies that came after compared to ones like this, is I think they, they have gotten a little more graphically violent, just given um, the f more freedom that filmmakers are being given. But I think there's there's a certain sense of, of the sinister and helplessness and, and a cold vibe that these movies had. Directed by Sergio Greco, a veteran of these films, and featuring an American star, Richard Harrison, it's a gorgeously shot picture, putting the subject matter at odds with the scenery and beauty surrounding the brutality. Featuring a strangely positive soundtrack clashing with the sadistic imagery, almost giving the lead madman a heroic quality. The quality is very good, or uh, good might not be the right word, but very efficient. The film moves along at a very, very nice clip. The action keeps you interested. Not only is the pacing well done, but it's well photographed, well blocked, uh, and uh, just delivers the goods. Just everything about how it looks is absolutely wonderful, from the wonderful locations to the choice of shots that he uses to pick up the, um, the main characters as he follows them. Well, like a lot of Italian action movies and a lot of Italian films in general, it's quite beautifully shot. Uh, you're always going to get a really cool score with movies like this, like a weird mix of uh, synth and, and orchestral, and uh, this movie's definitely got it. Which is more than I can say a lot of current movies right now, even movies that I really like. I really miss having a really memorable theme, a really memorable score to the movie. And this film, even when it's been years and years and years since I've sat there and watched it, Man, do I remember the musical score to this movie. I first encountered this movie, I first came across this film when I was looking into the Section 3 list. The Section 3 list is basically a sister list to the Video Nasties list. The Video Nasties being the censorship drive that happened in the early 80s. Section 3 was the bunch of films that uh, the police would be able to walk into a video store, take off the shelf, and walk out with and you would have to basically go to court and uh, try to get the film back. If there's one thing that the Department of Public Prosecutions lists did for these films is it gave it an uncommon uh, lifetime. I think in this country many of those films would probably have disappeared without a trace if it hadn't have been for that censorship drive. Beast with a Gun was one of those movies that 
It goes under so many different alternate titles. The Mad Dog Killer. Street Killers. A ferocious Beast with a Gun, which is a fantastic title. That somewhere along the way you may inadvertently own the movie more than once. So I remember when the movie first came out on DVD and it was under the Beast with a Gun title. Yeah, totally. Purchase, take it home. And as soon as the music starts, as soon as the theme starts, I sit there like, oh, I've uh, I've got a copy of this downstairs somewhere on VHS. I got a, I got a copy of it under uh, Mad Dog or Mad Dog Killer, one of the two. So okay, I own the movie on DVD now. I can I can deal with that. A film that tells a story it wishes to tell without being cute about it. Who does your dirty work? You know what you got coming? An informer's got to die. If you had half the guts that you pretend to have, you'd meet me face to face, coward. Listen, you motherfucker. Don't you push me, or I'll knock them off immediately. A humorous take on crime and violence. Well, almost humorless. Oh, Jimmy, here, take this. What? Sorry, lady, I'm off duty. I have to get a beer cup all before serious dog work closes. Get in, darling. They specialize in dog beauty. Largely unnoticed in the grand scale of the Polizia Shetty genre, Beast with a Gun is an invaluable piece of Italian exploitation cinema. Do I think the general public would embrace a movie like this, or is it doomed to remain a cult film? I think with today's audiences, it's a bit of a tough question. Uh, there will always be audiences like myself and other cult film enthusiasts who will keep this film alive. A general audience tends to be kind of fickle. A cult audience and a genre audience tend to look at these films and love them and cherish them and pass them on. Yeah, I think people should get out there and watch more movies. There, there are literally millions of movies out there being made by different countries, by different filmmakers, with, with stars that aren't that well known, but you can make them well known by seeing those movies. I don't know if I like the term doomed to remain a cult film. First of all, I don't think that this is a cult film. Uh, a cult film has a very uh, strong following, a legion of following that um, watches the film habitually, almost religiously. You know, I think the best hope for a film like this is for it to become a cult film. Uh, mainstream movies fade and cult lasts. Is a 1970s Polishetti is a 19 is a 197 Polias the is a night the fuck is that word largely unnoticed in the grand scale of the uh, beast with a gun is a valuable would not be invaluable beast with a gun is an invaluable piece of Italian exp why did I like it mr. Lobo liked this film because One for the Christmas reel, Josh. Okay, here we go. <laughs> and then his stomach revolted at that moment. <laughs> All right. One more time. One more time.